Hi, I'm Dan and welcome to the Airbrush Garage. If you're new here, welcome. If you're returning, thanks for coming back. Today, I'm gonna to tackle the question to why won't my airbrush spray? There's many reasons why your airbrush won't spray. You may think that everything looks right, you have everything right, but you still can't get paint to come out and it's very frustrating, especially when you're trying to learn and you're running into this problem. So I'm gonna tackle a few of the reasons why possibly your airbrush isn't spraying and how to fix it. So with that, hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, please hit that bell to get future notifications, hit the subscribe button, leave me some comments, good or bad. Check out my Amazon affiliate links down below. And with that, let's get started. Before I go over some of the reasons why your airbrush won't spray, if you stick around to the end, I'm gonna share with you my biggest bonehead move of why my airbrush wouldn't spray. Well, all right, so your brush won't spray and you don't know why. So before we go any further, let's just take a look at some of the mechanics or the real simple mechanics behind the airbrush. So basically, all you gotta do to get this thing to work is have paint come down onto the needle and have airflow come across the needle. Now, I've already known a lot of people who are just getting started and they think the paint and the airflow come out of one spot. It does not, okay? When you pull or draw the needle back, the paint is going to drop down onto the needle and then there are little holes, and I'll throw a picture up here for you, a close up. There are little holes or air holes where the air comes flowing out. Now, when the air comes flowing out of there, it is going to get concentrated in on the nozzle cap, which is this little guy right here with the little needle hole in the front of it, that air is going to get all condensed in there and blow the paint off the needle through this hole, okay? So, as long as you have paint or paint is able to flow onto the needle and you have good airflow coming past the needle, you're gonna get paint. All right, so why won't my airbrush, if everything looks good, why won't my airbrush spray? Okay, well, there's quite a few reasons. I have straight Createx paint in here. Um, this happens to be uh, an Iwata Eclipse has a 3.5 needle. Now this can probably spray this paint unreduced. But if you're using a smaller tipped gun, like this is a 0.18, I'm not gonna be able to put straight paint in here without reducing it. I can sit there and pull back on that trigger and I'm gonna hear air all day, but I'm not gonna get any paint because the paint is not going to flow down where it needs to get to on the needle. As long as you can get paint down on the needle, you can spray. As you can see, I'm really not getting good consistent paint. So what that's telling me is my paint is too thick. I'm gonna take some 4011 in my case because I'm using Createx and I'm gonna reduce this probably about 20%. All right, so I put my 20% reducer, my 4011 in here, and what do you see the difference? I got it mixed up real good, and now I'm getting a nice spray out. Okay, so sometimes, depending on what size needle you're using, you just gotta keep reducing your paint down and again, with a three or a three five needle, probably about 10 to 20% with this Createx paint is probably good. Um, depending what I'm doing, I might even, you know, push it a little further, but unless you're using like a 0.5 needle, you're probably not going to be very successful just spraying any paint, straight paint through without a reducer. So that's problem number one. All right. Problem number two, tip dry. Tip dry is something that everybody at airbrush is going to deal with but there's a way to minimize it. Now, a lot of factors play into tip dry, like your climate, you know, that you're in. I do a lot of airbrushing in the garage. So, you know, I'm dealing with heat, humidity, sometimes cooler temperatures. So uh, that's all gonna play a factor, but there's ways to minimize it. So I purposely put some paint out here on the, on the needle and had it dry so you can see that you're just not gonna get any, you know, any spray. Okay, because you got paint dried on that tip. So there's two ways, or my favorite ways of getting it off and clearing that out is one, I use my thumb and my first finger 
but you got to be careful and get good at this so you don't bend your needle. The other way, surefire way that I really actually grown to like was I get a little bit of reducer in a cup, put it on a paintbrush, I just swipe the front of it. And what I even like to do is I like to take the, the pull the needle back and really wipe the front of that right there. Now, the trick to this is you don't want to take your brush and just start spraying right from there because you're going to blow reducer onto your project. Okay, so you want to give it a couple shots of air, take a paper towel, just poke it a little bit through, and I'll show you something that just happened. See right there? So that was all the reducer and the paint that was actually out there on my tip. So that really gives it a good cleaning. Now, once you got it clear, you're back to spraying. Just one really important tip on tip dry. Um, I didn't learn this one until about a couple of years ago. Um, I think I heard it from Drew Blair, actually. Uh, it's on my bucket list to take one of his classes and I will do that soon. But um, he had a really good tip on tip dry. And basically what it is, is when you pull, push down for air, because you always want to keep your air on, right? When you're spraying and you pull back for paint, a lot of times people leave it go right there. That's gonna give you tip dry. You wanna push down for paint or air. You wanna pull back for paint and then you want to return for shutting your paint off and then your air off. And what that's doing is making sure that you have no buildup on your needle because when you pull that paint back and then you push forward and shut your paint off, the air has now just cleaned off your needle. Whereas a lot of people don't realize it but they're taking their finger off too soon and there's still a little bit of paint left on there that the air didn't blow off. Okay, so that one really helped me out throughout the years. Number three, air leaks. Now, all the guns are different, I realize that, but you wanna make sure that you have no air leaks because if you have an air leak, um, that can cause the gun to spray sporadically or not spray at all. You know, in this particular case, on this gun, I got the wrench. Now, on any gun, I don't ever recommend that you really wrench down on any part of the gun. You just want to snug it up. But in the Eclipse, you have this particular housing. So as I said before, there is a hole or holes that are going to blow air into this nozzle. So if you have an air leak around that nozzle, it's definitely going to affect the way the gun sprays. So you want to make sure that that nozzle is just snug, but airtight. Now, all guns work differently. Some of them have the real small nozzles on them. Um, it's a little bit different where they have the threaded uh, nozzles. This is a compression fitted nozzle. But again, even those nozzles, you just wanna make sure that you're airtight. Any air leaks will cause your gun not to spray properly. All right, number four, believe it or not, this has happened to me quite a few times, and especially when I first started, it took me a little bit to, you know, a few minutes to figure out what was going on. But I like to clean my gun a lot. Um, I know there's gonna be guys out there to say you shouldn't do it, but it's just what I've always done. It works for me, you do what works for you. But I'm not gonna take this gun apart, but obviously when you take the gun apart to clean it, you're gonna remove the needle. Well, I go to put the gun back together, I'm not thinking, I'm in a hurry, so I push my needle in, I don't tighten up my needle nut, put my back on, I go to spray, and I'm getting nothing up, I'm getting something because the needle must have caught, but you know, I'm not getting very good spray at all. Why? Because what's happening is my needle is not being grabbed by my nut and it's not going back and forth like it should. As simple as that may sound, I know there's lots of you out there that have done it before. Pop me a comment down below. Let me know if that happened to you. Number five, the nozzle. Maybe last time you cleaned it, you got some debris in there. Usually if the needle is sticking through, you're probably good to go, but there could be some remnants in there. You might have a clogged nozzle. Again, this is a compression nozzle on this Eclipse. So it's a fairly big nozzle. It's a little bit easier to clean than some of the other models. I have some other Iwatas over there have the very, very small threaded nozzle. You know, if you get any kind of debris in the gun, they, they can clog very easily with a little bit of debris because they're usually a smaller needle size. Um, so 
Again, this is one of the reasons that your gun may not be spraying. If you think you might have a clogged nozzle, remove the nozzle, put it in some reducer, blow it out. I use some paper towels, uh, twist it up to get inside there a little bit. And you know, there's brushes, there's other cleaning instruments that you can get. Paper towel does just fine. Spray some reducer through it, make sure it's clean, get it back in the gun and I'm sure you'll be fine. Now, just to cover the bottle feeds real quick, um, I don't spray with bottle feeds, but I have sprayed with bottle feeds. And basically it would be all of the same things that I just went over, except for on your cap of your bottle, there's a little air hole. If that air hole gets clogged, your gun won't spray. It becomes vapor locked and it won't spray. You need to be able to have that airflow getting sucked in through the top of the cap in order for your paint to flow. The other one would be a clogged tube, which is usually pretty easy to see. Again, soak it, put some reducer, or maybe even throw the bottle out and just get a new one. Um, but you really shouldn't have your paint laying in there that long to have a clogged tube, because generally they're usually pretty big, but it has happened. So I told you if you stuck around at the end, I was going to share with you the biggest bonehead move I've ever made to get my gun not to spray. And here it is. All right, so on my Iwata Eclipse, there's your needle protecting cap, and then there's a nozzle cap. While I was off the airbrush for some time, I gave it a break for a little while at one point uh, in my past 20 years. And when I went back to airbrush, I cleaned my brush really good before I put it away. But I always sprayed with my protecting or my needle protecting cap off. Well, when I unscrewed it, it also unscrewed my nozzle cap like so. It was stuck and I did not realize it. So when I removed what I thought was my, just my protecting needle cap, I removed my nozzle with it and I didn't realize it. And I just could not figure out why this gun wouldn't spray. I called Iwata and started asking him questions why my gun wouldn't spray. Because as I said before, that needle, paint comes down on that needle and then air has to come through the nozzle cap. Well, without the nozzle cap, it cannot concentrate the air all down into that little hole. Okay, so I know I'm not the only one out there that done that. The reason why I know that is because I found my solution online and I felt like a real idiot, but you know what? We've all been there. We've all done something that we can't believe we've done. But I guarantee you that will not spray without that nozzle cap. So that's my biggest bonehead move I've ever done. Or you can pop a comment down for me down below and let everybody know what your bonehead move was. Well, there you have it. There's a few reasons that I've learned throughout the years of why this thing sometimes doesn't want to spray when you want it to. You can think you have everything right and it just won't spray paint. And there's nothing more frustrating when you're trying to learn how to airbrush and that happens to you. So that was just some of my experiences I wanted to share with you. I'm sure you guys have more to add to the, you know, what I just put on this video. So if you do, please share it out with everybody. Leave a couple comments down below. Let everybody know what happened to you. Share your experience. That's how we all learn. We learn from each other. So with that, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please consider subscribing. Don't forget to check out my Amazon affiliate links down below. A couple comments, good or bad, really helps out with the YouTube algorithm. And with that, we'll see you in the next video.